It's Steve from AirplaneEnvy.com. Today we're going to build a preheater so that we don't damage our engines on startup on cold, cold, wintry days. Don't forget to hit the like button if this motivates you to do a DIY project on your airplane. Well, we got our first snow in the northeast today where I'm from, and I thought it'd be a good time to do a video to show you how to build a really inexpensive preheater for your airplane. These are really good for retractable gear um, because you can put the nozzle of the heater up in the wheel well, cover the cowling, and keep your engine nice and toasty. You might have to get a little more creative if you have a uh, fixed gear airplane where you have to run some extra duct work into the cow section to keep your engine warm. But this is basically a video to show you how to do the heater and the stand and everything you need to keep your engine nice and toasty on these cold winter days. So I'm going to start by unboxing this heater. And this heater is $20 to $24. You can get it at Lowe's, any home improvement place, maybe even Walmart. And uh, it provides plenty of heat not too much heat. It doesn't do any damage to your airplane. Very simple heater. It has a high and low setting. It's got a built-in thermostat on it. And uh, this is what it looks like. Pretty simple. We're going to take some parts off of it because we don't need it. We're going to take these front handles off. Best and quicker if you use a uh, little drill. Screwdriver kind of thing to assemble this heater. Some heaters have a little indicator light here and uh, may have to modify this boot that I'm going to talk about here in a minute to, uh, to clear that. So what this is, is a 10 by 6 by 6 takeoff it's called. It's duct work that's used on houses. It's good sizing for this heater. And we're going to use two adjustable elbows and then a 24 inch piece of uh, 6 inch duct. And uh, first thing we're going to do is cut some slits on this boot so we can make it fit the heater. So with the tin snips, I'm just going back about an inch and a half on each corner of this boot. do is bend this downward and I'm using the edge of the table basically that's going to give us a little bit of a mounting flange to the heater you can bend that down this stuff's pretty pretty light gauge pretty easy to work with so we're just going to do the top and bottom this way Didn't cut that one quite far enough. Basically, that's going to fit right on top of there, like so. You can see that. Okay. 
and that's going to cover the output of the heater. And right there, that little light is kind of in the way, so I'm going to notch that out so that that is not covered up. And like I said, this stuff's pretty easy to work with, light gauge. Um, may want to work with gloves, I forgot mine this evening, so. The metal is sharp, you can get cut, so be careful with it. All right. I'll lay the heater down and see how that fits on here. Yeah, that clears that light. That looks pretty good. I'm going to dress this up a little bit by snipping off some of these sharp edges. It'll just help to keep from getting poked. And then we've got some screws. You could use hex headed screws, any kind of sharp point screw that'll pierce the metal so you don't have to pre drill. It's kind of handy. going to fit nice right there like that okay uh, these are self drilling screws or sharp points these are half inch half inch is all you need to go through this thin sheet metal so just want to make sure that we're kind of centered up over the output of that heater I'm going to push down on it drill a screw in it Make sure you're lined up. To get one in it, that seems to be the, the tough one getting the first one started. So, two screws, two screws in each side. There's nothing inside the heater to worry about with the screws. Uh, I would suggest using half inch screws. Anything longer um, might interrupt something in there, but short ones are okay. And continue on around. The more force you can push down on them. Quicker they bite in. You gonna help me, boy? Huh? You gonna help me with this one? Good boy. This is Beckett. He likes to hang out in the hangar with me. He's a nine month old German Shepherd. Very curious and a good boy. Wanna say hi, Beckett? Huh? Wanna say hi? Yeah, you're a good boy. You're a good boy, yes, you are. So we've got this thing attached pretty strong. Okay, so that's the basic starting point. Then we're going to add an elbow. I've got another heater here to go by. We want the fattest part of this elbow. 
be at the bottom of this boot. So basically, I want it to go in like so. I want it to be in there pretty good to start with. And we're going to run a couple screws in it just to keep it there. So this is the beginning of it, but it's starting to get nose heavy. So we're going to build a brace right here. And we're going to do that with this Z-lock strip right here. So we'll set this out of the way. And we've got a piece of Z-lock here. This is pretty handy for doing what we want to do. So we're going to, we're going to measure 12 inches. What a mark. And then another six inches because that's the width of our duct. So 12 and 6 is going to give us 18. And then we're going to do another 12 inches from 18. So that would be, uh, what, 32? Or 30, rather. So there we go. Got our 6-inch mark. Got our 12-inch mark. 12-inch mark. And we want to cut this at the third mark. So that's all we're going to need for this. marks we want to bend this so we'll just use the edge of the table again put our mark right there and bend it right there and we're gonna do the same thing here and there we go six inch width 12 inch high and then want to mark where it's going to go around our elbow. Bring this back up here. This is basically going to go right there. And I want to mark where the where the elbow touches basically. Do a mark there. And that's pretty much going to be the same as this side. And the reason I'm marking that is because I want to curve this the way that's curved, just so it sets on there nice and I can screw it to the elbow. And the way we're going to do that is with a hammer. And I don't know if this table will hold up too well this. Clean off there a little bit. Roll it up. 
that's basically what we're looking for one little angle to it keep rolling up looking pretty good maybe a little bit more over here Looking too shabby. Let's see how she fits. Yeah, that looks nice. That looks good. So now we're just going to set this up so it's carrying the weight and we'll run some screws in. I've got some longer screws for this because we're going through several layers and I've got some uh, one inch screws. And that'll help go through everything. What's the matter, boy? Huh? You don't like all that banging? Oh, no. Necessary evil. So we're just going to hold this up a little bit. Run a screw through it. I suppose maybe a drill bit wouldn't have been such a bad idea at this point. A little one just to get the hole started because that's a real a real bear So there we go. Now we've got support for the rest of our our duct work. So next we are going to take our 20 foot. Now this is specific to the Piper Comanche. Um, this could be modified from this point. You could be modified to whatever you need to suit your airplane. This just happens to fit the Piper Comanche. Okay, now we've got a nice sturdy base for our heater and next we're going to make the uh, pipe that goes between the elbows and this for this specific application and this is for a Piper Comanche this pipe is going to be 16 inches high and they come as short as uh, two foot sections and that's what I have right here. So basically, we're just going to shorten this to, uh, to 16 inches. And we're going to measure from the male end of it to 16. I'm going to put marks every, every so often around here. A little, mark, a little marker. And I'm just going to cut it with a snip. Not my sharpest snip, so it's making me work for it, but it'll get the job done. Snips work. There's, I believe this is a left hand snip, the red ones are right, yellows are center. So when you snip 10, the way it cuts, you're going to have to pull up as you go. So I want to pull up the smaller piece instead of the piece I'm going to use. I want to pull up the waist. So that's why I'm cutting it this way. So, 
all this. inch piece and we can go ahead and put it together and then you just kind of have to roll these edges together a little bit line them up push them down and they click line up the ends and there we go so this is going to go into our heater <clears throat> Like so and we want to arrange this elbow so this thing is coming up pretty much as straight as possible for this application and again we're going to run screws into this Three is really all you need. Three evenly spaced. elbow it's going to go with the highest part of this toward the back or toward the heater And again, we're going to screw that together. did that wrong. I wasn't looking at my other finger. Big dummy. Okay, this guy. So we want this tall spot for over here.
Yeah, like so. All right. So the tall spot is going to go on the side because this elbow is going to point out to the side. Something like that. All right, now we want to get this piece together. Get this lined up nice. All right. That elbow to go up pretty much straight up and down. Okay. Now, this is where our foil tape comes in. Foil tape's going to keep this. Uh, going to keep this joint all together and keep the angle where we want it, this uh, adjustable elbow. So we're just going to take some pieces of this tape and go around each slip joint and that will lock it in place. This is always fun getting this tape to start. So we've got the elbow where we want it. Basically going to lock it in. Just going to cover that joint all the way around with foil tape. And that will keep it from spinning. So we're going to do each slip joint because it will still turn until you get them all covered. So... All right, so we've got that nice and secure. Now, we want to make a carrying handle for it. So again, we're going to use this Z strip for our handle. And we're going to make it 16 inches long again, same measurement. And one end is three and a half inches. I'm going to put a mark on that. And the other mark is about two and a half inches from the other end. Three and a half and two and a half but we're cutting the whole thing at 16 inches now we're cutting through like four layers of metal so it's a little tough but it'll go All right, there's our piece. Now, 
at the three and a half mark, we're going to cut this. Or not cut it, we're going to bend it at a right angle. So we'll put it right on the edge of our table. We'll pressure down. That's going to be a right angle. And then at our other mark, it's just going to be a slight bend, not too far at all, just a slight angle, something like that, nothing major. And what this is going to be is our handle so we can carry this big guy around. And it's going to get screwed into the top of the heater like so. Just anywhere in the center here. But before we screw this down, we're going to put some red tape because it just kind of gives you an idea of where to grab this handle. So I'm going to take this. This is just electrical marking tape. Uh, you can use black tape, anything, doesn't matter. So we're just going to. I'm just going to go around this handle. Obviously, this is easier to do now before we install it. So I suggest you do that. Alright, that's that. This is going to go here. Basically right there, centered up on this. Bend that a little more if we want. And there's a good carry handle. That works real good, especially when you're setting it underneath the airplane. Goes right up in the wheel well. Works very nice. All right, we've got this positioned correctly. And we're just going to take these joints so they don't move on us. Just like we did the other ones. Basically, you want to straddle that joint with the tape so it can't move on us. Okay, we're all taped up. Now it can't move. Now one last thing I like to do, well not last thing, we're not done, I like to take a piece of this same tape and go around the edge because this edge is kind of sharp. I want to leave the excess going in the hole here so I'm kind of splitting the difference on the tape here. I'll come around, let this just ride inside. Come all the way around. And basically this is just a protective layer of tape. So that the end of this ductwork doesn't 
chafe or cut anything inside the engine cowling. Wouldn't want it up there cutting any wires or chafing against anything. So, run a piece of tape around that and then just kind of finish it off by just going even with the, the edge. That's just for that's just for looks really. Follow the edge. Okay, and then the last thing I want to do, get the hammer out. This will probably bring the dog around again. Where we put this boot on the heater, got some sharp edges. So we just want to kind of pound those down so no sharp edges are sticking out. Throw those edges down a little bit and then we'll use our foil tape to kind of close everything in. Doesn't have to be pretty, doesn't have to be perfect. We're just kind of covering these edges. Don't want any sharp edges. This also seals some air leaks a little bit. You want as much of that heat going into your cowling as possible, so kind of seal all that up. You can go as much tape as you want and seal all the joints if you want. Okay. And that's basically it. And that will provide all the heat you need to warm up your engine. Thank you for watching my DIY preheater video from AirplaneEnvy.com. Don't forget to subscribe to Airplane Envy.